What's up guys, it's Will back again, and today's review is the 2006 dramedy film Stranger Than Fiction. First requested to me by Diego Lima and directed by Mark Foster, Stranger Than Fiction takes place in Chicago and primarily follows Will Ferrell's character Harold Crick. Harold, an IRS agent, spends each of his days exactly the same. He follows the same routine, does the same mundane things, and lives a fairly isolated lifestyle overall. However, one day he wakes up and something's different. He begins hearing a voice as his life is being narrated by an author. Author. The more Harold investigates, the more he realizes his life story is being written by esteemed author Karen Eiffel, and the rest of the film is spent watching Harold seek help for his unusual situation as he attempts to figure out what's going on and how to stop it. Alright, so I didn't know anything about Stranger Than Fiction before this request. I didn't even know it existed. As I went to look it up online, I actually saw that there's a totally separate film from 2000 also called Stranger Than Fiction, so I'm really just hoping that I'm reviewing the right movie here. But I can tell you that the 2006 version of Stranger Than Fiction is actually a really clever, really fun, and really dramatic movie. It actually surprised me because I sort of half expected it to kind of overwhelm me with its silliness, but it never did. And it actually manages to take a pretty out there plot and somehow fashion it into a really emotionally riveting movie. This is a really easy and a really enjoyable watch. I also think this is a smart movie. It's kind of like movieception because you're watching the narrator narrate the plot of her story, which in turn is the plot of the movie you're watching, and the progression of the characters in the book directly parallels the development you're seeing from the characters on screen, and it's sort of like the author is narrating the creative process of this movie to you as well, and in that way it's really an enlightening experience because it gives you a deeper understanding of how certain genres build their stories and progress their characters, as well as other, you know, tropes of the genre and those kind of things too. This is certainly a movie that can be enjoyed by a wide range of audiences, but I do think that people who are really interested and really invested in the creative process and the art of writing and filmmaking in general will probably enjoy it most. I say that because at times it feels like a really entertaining and really engaging script writing lesson. It talks about things like what narrative tools separate a comedy from a drama, how to properly motivate your characters, you know, those kind of technical things that will obviously appeal more to like a film student than anyone else. It's fairly subtle though. I don't think your everyday viewer would watch Stranger Than Fiction and feel bored or overwhelmed with the technicality of it. This is a movie that can absolutely be enjoyed as a dramedy and you really don't have to get too analytical with it if you don't want to. The surface of it still has plenty to offer. One of the biggest bright spots of the film has to be the performances though. There's four or five key characters and they're all really, really well acted. This is definitely one of the best active requests I've gotten thus far because I thought each actor brought such a unique presence to their character and I legitimately felt like I was watching a true story within a story unfold on screen. This is not your typical Will Ferrell performance. Harold certainly has his funny moments, but I actually enjoyed him over a lot of the other Will Ferrell characters because he's way more restrained. He still has an abundance of personality, but he's a lot more reined in and he's actually a lot more realistic too. He certainly still a fairly unique individual, but he feels like a legitimate everyday guy, and I think that's what the fictional author and the filmmakers in real life were going for. I like seeing Will Ferrell in this type of role though. I really would like to see him take on more challenges like this that take him outside his comfort zone, because he really does have the ability to be a semi-serious dramatic actor if he really wants to. He still mixes in his fair share of Will Ferrell comedy here and there, but he actually nailed the dramatic requirements for this film pretty spot on. Kudos to him for that. So there's a couple other characters that I'm going to run through real quick. Maggie Gyllenhaal plays Anna Pascal, a bakery store owner who Harold Crick is auditing. Dustin Hoffman plays Professor Hilbert, a film professor, an expert who Harold goes to in search of advice regarding his life story. And Emma Thompson, who plays author Karen Eiffel, the writer of Harold Crick's story. I think each of these three do just as great a job as Will Ferrell did, but in different ways. It's pretty rare that Will Ferrell is the most reined in performer in a film, but that's exactly what happens here. I say the other three are definitely a little more out there and a little more eccentric than Harold Crick. I thought they were all really good, but I think I was most impressed with Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson's played some wild characters in her day, but I thought that Karen Eiffel was one of her best. I think she's just zany and just weird enough to be a perfect fit for this story. She actually brings a lot of comedy in too. The comedy as a whole is good though. This isn't a laugh your socks off kind of movie, but I'd say its level of humor is similar to what you'd get out of a standard dramedy film or even a romantic comedy. It's definitely a witty brand of humor, but it's definitely fairly family friendly as well. There's nothing in this movie that's going to offend or shock anyone, but that's just not what this movie is, and that's fine. I said before this is a very easy and very enjoyable watch, and the comedy falls right along those same lines. I liked how this movie manages the ride though. There's a lot of ups and downs for Harold Crick, and I always feel like there was an excellence in the way the emotional aspects of the story were handled. There's a lengthy development for Harold, and I really liked how we got to see the bumps in the road along the way to his drastic growth as both a character and a person. There's nothing about his personal development that feels unnatural, and when I watch the hurdles he overcomes to get there, 
there, it was really impactful for me because I've encountered a lot of those same things and I think you guys probably have as well. I think in some ways this does feel like a romantic comedy film, but it's one of the rare ones that actually feels like something different and also something emotionally impactful and resonant. But I will say, on the other hand, there's a relationship that Harold has with another character that I do feel comes a little bit out of left field. I get why it's there for the screenwriters because it in some ways acts as a catalyst for Harold's growth, but when you're watching the movie, things move pretty fast and I didn't quite buy the way that relationship came to be. The other problem I had is that the premise of the story is never fully explained. It's sort of a fairy tale s type of story and I get why they chose not to fully go into it, but I think it would help people better understand what's actually going on. I do think there's also an attempt to be a film that you can critically analyze for days on end with various theories, but I do wish there was just a little bit more effort to explain why this dilemma exists in the first place. But overall, I enjoyed Stranger Than Fiction a lot. I think it's a film that crosses a lot of different barriers and will provide something a lot of different crowds can enjoy. For the pros, I thought the story was well told, creative, and emotional. The acting and characters were excellent, the humor was lighthearted and fun, and the ending was really satisfying. As for the cons, I think there's one romantic element that's a little more abrupt than I would have liked, and the main conflict or premise isn't quite as fleshed out as I thought it would be, or I would like it to be rather. I'm still going to give Stranger Than Fiction a 9 out of 10 and definitely recommend you watch this one if you're looking for a unique dramedy film. This one is definitely worth a look if you're into those kind of things. Also, if you're into that technical kind of stuff as a film student or whatever, this is definitely worth a look. So have you guys seen Stranger Than Fiction before? What did you think of it? And if not, let me know why not. And also let me know your favorite Will Ferrell movie. This one is certainly up there for me. I think it's right there with Anchorman. That's all for now though. This is Will Foxification signing off. See you in the next video.